This time we stay with heavy machinery, but we're not looking at a diecast model. This is the Lego Technic version of the Volvo A60H articulated hauler. And as it says on the box, the model is controlled using a smartphone. The box is big and nice and colourful. And looking at the back, there are more pictures describing the features of the model. Opening up the box, there's another box inside. And there are lots of plastic bags containing pieces. Opening up the box, there's another box inside. And there are lots of plastic bags containing pieces. To help you build the model, a big fat book is included. Building the model is essentially carried out in four distinct stages. And the parts for each stage are included in numbered bags. Each stage has a number of bags, but there's no real logic as to what parts are in which bag. So you have to open them all up to find parts. Each step of building the model is covered by its own separate diagram. And the parts required are also shown. So the best way to build the model is to get all of the parts for one of the diagrams together and then put them together and move on to the next diagram. The quality of the diagrams is very good, and you need to be careful that you're following the instructions precisely. There are also true to scale part diagrams to make sure you've got the right pieces. One thing you can be sure of is that the fit of the Lego Technic parts is very good, and it's a great feature of the Lego system that the parts are so precisely made. There are 691 steps required to build the model completely. And here we are at the end of just stage one. As you can already see, this is a mechanically complex model. And that just reinforces the need to follow the instructions carefully and accurately. Going through the review model, there were a few spare parts left at the end. And somewhat as a surprise on the review model, it was actually one small part short. But luckily it wasn't a critical part, so we could do a workaround. Here is the completed model and it looks great. And as it's so large, let's do a dim check. End to end it's about 58 centimeters or 23 inches. And to the top of the beacon light is around 22 centimeters or about nine inches. For comparison, here is the A60H in one to 50 scale. And by comparison, the Technic model is roughly one to 20 scale. While we're at it, let's put the model on the cranes etc. weigh bridge. And it weighs around two and a half kilos, or getting on for six pounds. For the detail, we'll compare the Technic model with the WSI model's version. And you can see that underneath the Technic model is not really trying to represent the real machine. At the front, LEGO have made a good effort to represent the curved shape of the real nose. And graphics are applied to replicate the side grill. Smaller details such as the lights are modelled. And at the front, the Volvo name badge has been reproduced by adding on graphic stickers. The wheels have a detailed appearance and the big rubber tyres look good too. A good effort has been made to model the orange handrails. And there's also a large mirror assembly. Graphics detail has been achieved by using stickers. And moving up to the roof, both the shape and the grab rails have been modelled well. The Technic model also has additional lights mounted at the front. Inside the cab there's a steering wheel and seat, and additional detail is represented by a sticker. At the pivot point the hydraulics lines are modelled using the electrical connections from the battery box to the motors, but other detail at the pivot point is more of a compromise. Another compromise is the hydraulic ram for lifting the dump bed, and it's much shorter on the Technic model, probably because it's using a standard Technic part. A nice touch on the Technic model is the silvered exhaust. At the back there's a few more compromises in terms of modelling the rear axle. But a nice touch are the rear light clusters. And the overall shape of the body is good. On the dump body stickers provide the Volvo and A60H graphics. And they are a good representation of the real machine. The main features of the dump body have been modelled well. Be 
Before we look at the remote control functions, let's look at some of the static features. And just like the diecast model, the Technic model has an opening hood. You pull out a locking pin and the front plate folds down. And there's also a representation of the orange stepping bar. The hood lifts up and then you can use the locking pin to keep it up. We can then see the engine and we can see more of that later. Also movable on the model are the side mirrors. To begin our look at the main functionality, we'll firstly prop the model up on some temporary supports. To control the model, you firstly need to download the LEGO Technic app. And here it is starting up on a smartphone. When it starts, we can see a splash screen for the A60H. But the same app is also used for other remote control Technic models. Let's select the A60H and it begins loading itself up and it tells us to switch on the model. This is done by twisting the beacon light as a switch and then a Bluetooth connection is made with the smartphone. There are calibration and training sections in the app but here we're straight through to one of the two control screens for the model. We can select the gear shift into drive mode and then we use what is effectively a joystick. This controls moving forwards and backwards and also controls the turning. Here we've put the model on its side so we can see what's going on underneath and only the top wheels are turning because of the differentials used on the axles. At the front you can see that there's a working camshaft and if we look under the hood we can see that the cams operate what might be regarded as working piston heads. This model is actually very mechanically complex and it has a working free speed gearbox. As the speed increases, the automatic transmission changes gear and that also operates in reverse, so you have three gears in reverse also. The way the transmission is modeled means that if one wheel is stopped, the power goes to the other wheels, but that does mean on rough ground all power can be lost as it's transferred to a free wheel. The sound of the model comes out of the smartphone and that also includes a horn. And another interesting small feature of the model is the steering wheel turns as the cab is steered. Although in practice that is quite difficult to see. Out we go onto the giant cranes etc testing area. And here we can see how the model performs. The steering angle that can be achieved is moderate. And the model moves well enough on flat ground. Although it would have been nice to have a higher top speed. Let's move on to another feature of the model and that is the tipping dump bed. And this works at a realistic speed on the model. What we see here is the full range of movement that the pistons can be stopped at any position. However the overall tipping angle is somewhat less than the real machine can achieve. Let's now put a load on board and we'll use the double deck bus loader to put on some cork rocks. It is best to use lightweight material as a load and that makes both travelling and tipping easier on the motors. The rocks do come out well initially, but because the tipping angle is not steep enough, it needs a bit of manual assistance to help the unloading. As a final test, we'll look at the gradeability, and we'll start at a 16 degree slope, and it has no problem going up in first gear. Moving on to a 25 degree slope, and again the model climbs well although it does have to be in first gear to make the climb. If we move on now to a 33 degree angle, and we're just about at the limit, the A60H just about climbs, but traction and slippage is an issue. It's great to see another LEGO Technic model of a big mining machine. It's a complex model but it is fun to build and the overall look of it is pleasing. The smartphone app that controls it has many features and the overall functionality is interesting and fun to use. Overall the model is excellent. Mm -hmm.